Hey there, this is MathCamp321, and in this video I'm going to show you how to solve a differential equation using what's called separation of variables. The key concept here is to get the y's with dy and the x's with dx. Number one, find the general solution to the differential equation dy dx equals 5 plus x. I'm going to start by rewriting the problem. Now I'm going to cross multiply, leaving me with dy equals 5 plus x dx. Because 5 plus x is a multi-termed expression, I'm going to use parentheses around it. Now I'm going to integrate both sides of the equation. When I integrate dy, or 1 dy, I end up getting y. And moving to the right-hand side, when I integrate 5 with respect to x, I get 5x, and then 1 half x squared. And let's not forget the arbitrary constant plus c. So this right here is the general solution to the differential equation dy dx equals 5 plus x. And you could always check yourself by actually taking the derivative. Let's go on to another example. Okay, we're on the second slide, and we're going to discuss here a review of the rule for multiplying powers of the same base. This is going to be a really important facet in problems to come. Rewrite each with a single base, 2a, b to the x times b to the y. Let's remember that if we're multiplying powers of the same base, we retain the base, which in this case is b, and we add the exponents, getting us b to the x plus y. Moving to 2b, once again we have an example where we are multiplying powers of the same base. This time the base is x. So we will retain the base and we'll add the exponents, 2 plus 8 or 10. Moving to example 2c, e to the x times e to the fifth. Once again we're multiplying powers of the same base and that base is e. So we're going to retain the base and we're going to add the exponents. In the next two examples, we're going to use the same rule, but this time we're going to apply it in the reverse direction. So the directions say, use the rule backwards and rewrite as a product. So we start with e to the x plus 7. Now this looks very similar to the one that we just did up in 2c. So maybe let's take a look at that real quick and perceive the problem backwards. So notice, if we start off with e to a power that is a sum, we can express that as a product. So let's do that now. We have e to the x plus 7, so this could be thought of as e to the x times e to the 7th. Let's practice that one more time. e to the x plus c. Let's write this as a product. It would be e to the x times e to the c. So on this slide, we just reviewed a very basic Algebra 1 rule of exponents for multiplying powers of the same base. And you're going to see in the next example how this is implemented. Okay, so now we're on slide number 3, and we're looking at our third example. It says, to find the general solution to the differential equation dy dx equals y. Now this problem looks harmless enough, but there's going to be a lot of little interesting things that happen along the way. So let's remember our key concept. When solving a differential equation, get the y's with dy and the x's with dx. So I'm going to start by rewriting the problem. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is cross multiply. Now in doing this, I don't have my key concept acknowledged. I'm supposed to get all the y's with dy, and that's not happening. So now I'm going to divide both sides by y. Okay, I've just now completed my separation of variables. All the y's are with dy, and all the x's, of which there weren't any, are with dx. And my next step now is going to be to integrate both sides. Now I'm running out of room, so I'm going to come up to the top. The antiderivative of 1 over y is the natural log of the absolute value of y. And the antiderivative of 1 dx is just going to be x, and then of course, plus c. Now our objective in a problem like this is usually to make your final answer say y equals. 
So we're not quite at that point yet. So the next thing that I'm going to do is think about what the base of my natural log expression is. And this base right here is e. So I'm going to write that in. It might not be necessary for a lot of people. You probably know that. And now I'm going to do what I call a schwing, which I addressed in an earlier video. I'm going to say e to this power, this whole binomial, is equal to this. So really I've got e to the x plus c is equal to the absolute value of y. And now I'm just going to do a flip-flop. I like to have the y on the left-hand side. So I'm going to say the absolute value of y is equal to e to the x plus c. Now, if we think about the last slide that we just were on, slide number two, we learned how to go backwards and rewrite the right-hand side as a product. And I'm going to do that now. Now here's a new concept. e to the c is just going to be a number. If you took the value e and raised it to some constant, you're going to get some other constant. So instead of thinking about this constant as e to the c, we're just going to rename it as a new constant. This thing overall we're going to call c sub 2. The whole thing. So again we're running out of space, so I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to say the absolute value of y is equal to c sub 2 times e to the x. So this whole thing here became c sub 2, and I moved it out in front. We're almost done, by the way. Now, when you have an absolute value equation to solve, you're supposed to set up two new equations. The first one would be y is equal to c sub 2 times e to the x. And the second would be y equals negative c sub 2 times e to the x. Now the thing is, this constant c sub 2, it could have been positive or it could have been negative. So it's really not necessary to write two separate equations because the c could have been positive or it could have been negative. So since these two equations aren't necessary, we could go back and say that this absolute value, in fact, wasn't necessary. And that can go back all the way to this step right here, and I'll highlight this in red. When we get to this point for future problems, we're not going to use absolute value because it's not going to be needed. So our final answer for this one is just y is equal to c sub 2 times e to the x. And that c sub 2, it could have been positive or it could have been negative. And yeah, that's it. So this is kind of a tough problem, but we're going to see a lot of these same newer ideas in future problems. So you'll start to get the hang of it with additional practice. Let's go on to the next slide.